So if you're using uh, Mac right now, you can do the same thing as I do. Okay. So now let's open terminal. Okay. So let's open terminal. Uh, in case you're using Windows, okay, don't ask me. I don't know about. I don't know anything about Windows, okay? <laughs> yeah. So where can you find the extension? Now, first of all, uh, to guide me, <coughs> to guide me there, I will take a look at the Chrome extension list of my computer. Okay. So I have a set of Chrome extension here. So actually, we we can see some a uh, unique identifier. Okay. Oh, in case you don't know how to open it, uh, just type Chrome uh, colon slash slash extensions. Okay. So they are unique IDs. Uh, you can do a blind search. Okay, in Windows, you can ask the Windows to search this. Actually, this is the folder. Okay, this is the folder. And if you are using Mac, uh, sorry, library application support okay so are you there library application support okay so it should be Google and then Chrome and then default so let me highlight it okay so if if it is Windows I guess it should be a, uh, my document application settings something like that and, uh, Google, Chrome, and then default. Okay? So if you're using Mac, you can go to this here. Uh, so, in here, you will find many things, okay? One of the directory is called extension. So, you can see some some strange name here. Maybe you cannot see clearly. Um, slash bin slash ls. So you can see. All are directories. All are directories. Let's find one of your favorites. I know what is your favorite. Mm. This is your favorite, right? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I, you see, I disable it, huh? How about you guys? Uh, that's what you disable. That's, yeah, remember, after you will finish building, disable it, huh? Yeah. Okay, so you can see that PDN something there. Actually, that is a directory. So, just copy it, CD to here. So you find something now. So see my see my uh, directory. It's library application support Google Chrome default extension blah 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 blah. Okay. If you're using Windows, I guess it is a hidden directory. Uh, in your documents, you review all your hidden files, okay? Then you will you should see something like application files, something like that. I can't remember for for Windows things, okay? Then you can go to the unblock Yuku, and yeah, you find something, some files. You find JavaScript files. Hmm. Let's see a. Uh, one of the JSON file here is actually an object, okay, describing how many JavaScript file that it has, okay. So I said by default, Chrome extension is open source. It's because of this. And writing a Chrome extension is like you're writing a JavaScript program, okay. So in case you know JavaScript, then you kind of know how to write a Chrome extension, except that there are extensions, uh, parts that you may want to understand before it. Okay. So another example. Let's choose one of the thing that you may not know. Okay. This is Gmail. Ah, here. How many of you have installed this? Do you know what's this? The Google <laughs> Google Mail Checker. That is that number. Can you see that number in my extension bar? Is display how many emails you have. Okay. So you can go to this directory. Okay. Uh, 
okay so go back go back so go to this page and go to this directory then it is inside the Gmail icon now okay and inside the Gmail icon you'll find some JavaScript program actually the JavaScript program telling you how to read the one very important thing there is a feed okay so actually the Gmail is actually ex exporting a feed which is an XML so that every login user can see is a list of titles list of a sender or send your emails okay which is a feed okay one more which one do you want to see uh, I want something which is a uh, Hard to understand. Let's say, did I uh, I will uninstall it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, here, here. Remote desktop, remote desktop. Okay. How many of you are using that? How many? Of, yeah. So it seems to be interesting. Uh, remote desktop seems to be an executable, right? How come you can write a JavaScript program and call a executable? Okay. Let's take a look. Okay. CD, okay, wow, here, wow, so many JS, okay, wow, 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 but, what is that? E? E? What is that? File, data, just a data, okay, and some interesting name, Ah, let me find any executable file here. Wait, yeah. ls minus l pipeless. Mm, there should be some executable file, mm, but I cannot locate it now. Okay, so basically this is another type of extension. This type of extension is using something called NACL. NACL is not sort. Okay, it's not. Uh, 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 Sodium thing, okay? It's a native native client support. Okay. NA, native client CL. Native client support uh, developed by Google so that you can call your local executable file to display something for you. Okay? So, uh, this is some preview of our extension. Okay? So, uh, there are has been other project have uh, extension implementation okay so uh, I remember this one is done by uh, Gary and Peter okay they, they were maybe were, were your, your tutor okay in this good math okay <laughs> yeah they are very happy about them I don't know why okay so uh, let me find a screenshot. Uh, okay, come on. Hey, why so slow? Okay, okay, okay. Wait, can you see this? Can you see what what they implementing? Does this sound familiar? Just sound like the the Android Messenger Popo. Okay. So they actually implemented Popo as a Chrome extension. And on every pages you are on, that bubble will be there. So as if they are injecting code into every pages, including Google, and they choose me as a as target to set to send a message to me using the extension. And the extension is actually uh, using the Facebook chat. Uh, they call it X X M P P X M P P X M P P. I don't remember the name, okay? Uh, the protocol to send a message to my account, okay? And they claim that they can even send files, okay? Yeah, they, they, they now try to send a file, is it? Yeah, yeah. Track. Okay. And send to that computer. Okay. Right. Right. You you know what they're doing. They they actually don't have any storage. They they don't like 
like Google Drive and use the Facebook protocol as a video. Okay, to send send things out. Okay, so uh, this is one of the possibility. Okay, so what they're doing is JavaScript injection. Okay, one more is a rather old one. Uh, oh no no no, a rather old one. It's two two one two. So that guy is a. Uh, oh, let's wait. Let's wait. Okay. So this guy is actually very forward looking. Uh, he is implementing something like Spotify. Spotify. Okay. So uh, set up a, a list of playlists. Okay. But their storage is not Spotify, but on YouTube. Okay. So it's an extension that <laughs> you can play as many as many videos as you want over every web pages. Okay? As a so so long. So you can see here, uh, yeah. So this this guy is a uh, as uh, as um Golden Jai, okay. Yeah, he, he loved so many this kind of uh, videos. Okay. Yeah. He loved many, many videos and, and show that uh, his app works. Okay. So you can see uh, that this is how they, they uh, implement the things. And what did you see from there? It seems that extension allowed you some capability. The capability of working over any web pages, okay. As you can see in a, in a, uh, Peter's and Gary's uh, projects, okay, they overlay the chat over Google, but the chat is not Google Hangout, but Facebook Messenger. Uh, in here, they can uh, pop up any <coughs> any video as they want, okay. So we are going to explore how. And I have this to build one set of a uh, code. Okay, that set of code may be outdated. Okay, so if you find I'm using old code uh, that is not up to date, okay, please uh, uh, accept that. So this is the zip file here. Okay, so when you download the zip file, okay, I already put the desktop. So you can ex extract it and create a directory. I will use Sublime to open it. Okay, so there are different implementations. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing is actually showing you some capabilities. Let's say one of my capabilities is very interesting. I love this very much. Okay, it's called Facebook Selector. Okay, so you can download it and install it together with me. What is the Facebook Selector? Um, you can go to the Chrome extension tab. Chrome extensions low unpack extension and this is the Facebook selector select the folder install it okay so it's enabled now go to Facebook okay hey where is icon the icon is ah, here icon is here okay but developer mode disable what extension when it can harm your computer yeah I know yeah okay so forget about it. Let's let me show my icon here. Ah, yeah, it's hiding my icon. Ah, okay, okay, my icon is here. Okay, so you can choose uh, to to show some of the people here. Okay, let's say I choose to show Stanley. Did you have any recent posts? No. Okay, so let me choose someone have a recent post here. Mm, uh, no, 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 no. Myself is not interesting. Okay. Um, anyone sitting here is having a recent post? What happened to my feet? They are all yeah advertisement. Oh yeah. Or oh, maybe the the post profile is our last uh, guest like guest lecturer, King Cole. Okay. So you can choose King Cole. 
okay and select king code post only okay then I will highlight post only post by king code or contain king code's names inside okay <coughs> interesting huh or choose back none then it will show all the things let's say I I choose a mode okay there should be no more here because I I didn't post anything eh? what oh maybe it, with my with my photo <laughs> okay let's try something uh, XXX <laughs> Aya advertisement. Did they all advertisement now becomes I How about Lee? Okay, any any people with the name Lee? Uh some some Lee here. Maybe some Lee hiding in this list. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he can see. Uh Chi Chi Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what I'm doing, uh, what I'm doing is actually uh, writing an extension to process the tag, okay? And there is a storage inside my extension. The extension storage store the list of your interests, and you select your interests and highlight and only display those components, okay? So, will be interesting, right? So, let's go ahead to see how to write such a code. Okay, so uh, some of the example I I extract it from the Chrome extension tutorial. Okay, like the first one. Okay, so this is the beginning. So we we have to show it. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, one of the components that are available in a Chrome extension. Okay, so there are different components. The button that you see before the Facebook button, we call it pop up. Okay, the name is called pop up. And there is an other component called background. So what's the background? I draw it as a something running in behind the screen. So what is the something that is running behind the screen? Uh, you can see it here. Use the tools, okay? Use the task manager, okay? So they are the guys running in the background. Yeah, they are the background. Okay, so that's why there are some very naughty process running. Let's say the unblock Yuku. Okay, unblock Yuku. Actually, do, do you understand what what unblock Yuku is doing? How many of you have used it? How many of you don't use it? Okay, so why why you don't use it? Okay, so um, okay, so, so, not not ruling uh, China things. Okay, you okay. No, no, okay. How come? <laughs> when, when you search it, they will want to ruin it, okay? Now, actually, that thing is just an automatic proxy setting, okay? So, actually, it's hiding in the background, redirecting every traffic you are requesting towards Yuku, towards uh, Tudou. Okay, so that is uh, the extension is doing. But the extension is invisible. What is the meaning of invisible? Okay, take a look at my at my subtitle here. My subtitle here says that nothing is impossible for extensions. Extension is invisible in the sense that they can hijack every pages. They can hijack any connections. They can corrupt any cookies. Okay, so. Uh, since uh, there are some naughty extension pop up, Google has passed a uh, kind of regulations that only only extension that is published on the uh, Chrome Web Store is secure. Okay. Yeah, my my cell phone is ringing. Oh, what happened? Uh, okay. So. Again, uh, background pop up, and there is a box there. What is the box there? The green one is the number four that I highlight. It's called content script or JS inject. The JavaScript that inject into the page. 
Ah, interesting. And what is the meaning of injecting JavaScript? It means you are like, a, how can I describe to you? Ah, yes. The case that you, you load uh, jQuery, okay? Let's say you want to write code in jQuery, then you use a tag, script, source, equal to proper proper jQuery, uh, JS, okay? And actually, this is a normal loading of a JavaScript file. Now you are allowed to inject any JavaScript you want into the page whenever you load the extension. Uh, last thing, uh, the pop-up or the pop-up page. The last thing is working together with pop-up page is called a browser action. They're just names, okay? Now let's take a look. What are the names? How how they works? Start with the uh, hello world. So ah, uh, actually I have a Windows directory. Okay, if you are interested, you go to here. I can't remember exact tab. Maybe it's correct. Huh? I just uh, do it once and copy and paste here. Okay. So let's take a look at our directory structure. Um, there are some must have features for extension. The background JS is the background code that is running. Uh, this icon is optional. The manifest JSON is required. So let's take a look at the manifest JSON. And it's called Hello World. So Hello World is here. OK? So you can take a look. Hello World directory. Uh, later on, let's load together. So I said that this is a JavaScript, but it's kind of a different type of JavaScript because it is uh, using some uh, Chrome specific objects like the Chrome. You never see there is an object called Chrome. Huh? Now it's inside the world of Chrome extension. So when you call, it's called Chrome dot something. And the browser action is a button. So the browser action on uh, is kind of interesting. They call it in that way on Clay Ad Listener, okay? And there is no no comparison in in a proper JavaScript that is something like that, okay? It's this at least Ad Event Listener, the event type and the function. Now there's no event type. The event type become a name on Clay, okay? And when you call it, it will execute something like this. Again, it's also uh, obey all the law, just like the uh, coaster. So the, here, the coaster of this callback function, including the count, OK? So it's bind together. Now, let's do it. What will happen if I load this extension? First, I unload my highlighter. Load. So if you have downloaded, you can do it together. So just extract the zip file and find the Hello World directory and just load the Hello World directory. Okay. Then yeah, a very ugly uh, CHK logo. I don't know why CHK is kind of kind of playing us. Okay, you can see so many uh, schools they use square icon. CHK is not a square. Yeah, yeah. ACM guys know. Okay, whenever they ask people ask you for an icon, they will ask you, "Hey, where do you have a square one?" Yeah, yeah. We have to do it. So that is become some something like that. Okay. Uh, so after you load it, you see there is new button here. So new button here. Okay. Yeah, I, I know it's ugly because you curse curse the designer. Please, okay, don't curse me. The designer make it not non square. Yeah, go ahead. Ah, oh, makes sense, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, he what he said is that there is no, no computer when when that elbow appear. Okay. So yeah, when you click it, you see Hello World Zero. Why we have Hello World Zero? Uh because of the count, right? I just alert oops alerts hello and then plus a count here. So when I Click again. It will become one. Okay. So what can you say about this background? This background is actually running in the background. The entire JavaScript, um, you can see, you can say the culture or the memory is actually in the background running 
although you can see this code, when you run this code, it will die, okay? But actually, you register the callback. The callback find the closure environment with the count variable, okay? So it still persists. Now, how about the console.log? Where are you? Where is the console.log? Let's take a look, uh, inspect. Is it here? Can you see any console lock here? No, there is no console lock. Okay, so where is the console lock? Yeah. Is there any? Uh, yeah. Why is why what? Come on, the inspector up. Where are you? But I can uh, actually I can see in another way. Yeah, inspect will background page. Yeah, it's here. Okay? So what can you say about this? Actually there are two separate worlds. In a page, in a page that you normally touch, it's actually not the world that the background JS is running. The background JS as if uh, there is uh, some background daemon, the server program. Uh, server is running in the background. Okay? And you can see the count one, two, three. All here, okay. So this is the the basic requirement that you have to understand. Actually, they are separate world. One world is an extension world. Another world is the uh, something that you see. Now, uh, I don't know whether you have you have experienced this or not. Okay, my my FYP have experienced when when we try to debug the the game, they see many extension errors pop up. Okay. So let me see whether I can see this extension errors. No? Should should we load should we load <laughs> your, your game so that we can see the extension error? <laughs> Let's try. Okay. Is there any extension error? No? What happened? This time no? You... Oh, okay. Yeah, machine problem. Okay, this machine don't have an error. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but but wow, actually there are some extension errors. So where can you get those extension errors? Later on, we will talk about another thing. We call it JavaScript injection. Then you will see. Okay. So this is the first game. Okay, you can write write the code together with me. Huh? very very easy. But the Manifest is kind of uh, different. Uh, some requirement is about the versions. Okay, I try uh, writing a garbage version number. It's just reject me, uh, forbid me to load it. Okay, so you have to hard code that. And others, the names, the description, version, you can just uh, write anything there. Here is to tell that uh, the background JS. Where is the background JS? Okay. And the CHK icon, I just put it in the icon. And a browser action, that is the button. That button, when you click, it's actually this uh, icon. So you can do whatever you want. You can just press it and say some, some hello world, something like that. Okay. Now, this is the basic about extension. Next, we'll go to something need to advance. Okay. So this is the code. Something need to advance is the pop up. Okay. So the pop up is an other separate world. Because they have its own index.html, or maybe it's not called index, but popup.html, the name is up to you. Okay? So, the popup is an other extension. So, first I remove this hello world and load another one. This time is a hello world with a popup underscore here. Okay? So, let's load it and something pop up. It's the same thing, okay? It's the same icon, but when I click it, you can see how the world pop up here. Close it, click again, click again. Yeah, I just do a random number. <laughs> random number to, to show some random random color, okay? Yeah, so uh, how to do it? Very easy, right? Okay, so uh, pop up, the manifest, Manifest.json means the installer configuration. It's just changed a little bit. Uh, we have a pop up in dot, dot, uh, HTML. Then the background can 
Can we take a look at the background? Okay, uh, just the same thing. Now, how about the pop-up itself? The pop-up itself is very interesting, okay? Uh, it's just loading another JavaScript file. Okay, so let's take a look at the JavaScript file. Okay, so the JavaScript file is like this. It says, uh, I, I just do a stupid thing, okay? I have an array of colors, okay? And a random, random, and then uh, <laughs> set, the, set the style there, okay? So, this is it. Now, what I'm going to show you, okay, is something that is not easy to understand, okay? So, this init functions, okay, when it just click uh, on the button, okay, it will uh, first load it run, okay, when it run, it will set up all the things, okay? Now, when it load, it will kick, uh, we will start this, and you see what I'm doing. Actually, I just have a random number, okay? And when I have a random number, I set the style color here and say that there is a last color and the current color, okay? Last color means the color that I used previously and I set it as a global variable, okay? Now, when I we execute it, we execute it, okay, so let's go to inspect, now this time I can inspect it, okay? Okay, so okay, where is the console? Uh, console is here. So the last color is now, current color is gray, okay, fine. Now, I click it again, click, inspect again, console. What can you say about this? Huh? What did you say? Yeah, it's just like we load the page. It will destroy all the internal status. Once this pop-up page, actually there's a HTML, once this pop-up page is gone, okay? So, this is it. Now, think about it. Does it, does it normal, okay? How many of you have used the lazy CUHK or lazy ERG Wi-Fi login things? Only you. Only a few? I don't believe that. No one use it? How about others? You don't use the ELG way? Yeah. Now think about it. That that type of machines uh, automatic login things, okay? It seems that it is saving some important information. Right? Where does it say? Can you guess? It seems that it's not in the pop-up, right? The pop-up once you we load it, it's gone. It's not using a bouncer button, okay? Can you, can you describe to me that what it is doing? <coughs> now, when you do the login, you will touch this link, right? Touch this link. Uh, did you use this this link, right? Do you know what is this link? Ah, you you are you are you guys living in living in SHP? Only I live in there. <laughs> yeah, you guys should listen. I live there. Okay. You know what this like? This like is every time you you go to SHP or ELB, it will redirect you to this like, right? And when you be redirect to this like, if you have a, a lazy ELG way login uh, extension, what does it look like? What what will we do? Did you use that? No. You didn't use that lock. Automatic lock. It can. What is what is that? What is the look like when it touch this page? Redirect. Immediately redirect to the successful page. Okay. So what it's doing? It seems that it is a hard coding or kind of sending a request to the server for the login. Now, think about it. Where is your credential? It seems that it's not a member of of what? Of the pop-up, not pop-up. Not the browser actions. It seems that there's something that are always running. Okay? 
I know how dangerous that app is, so I never use it. <laughs> now, for those who have who have used it, okay, I will give you two minutes, okay? How who have used it? Okay. Only you now others don't 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 be shy, okay? As long as you don't say you don't give me your computer, it's okay. Yeah, when I can physically touch your computer, you have problem, okay? Yeah, you can go in there, go to this page, and <coughs> Go to the login, login thing and inspect the background page. Okay, and inspect background page, and go to look up the resource part. Okay, go to look up resource part, and I tell you where can you find your login ID and password in plain text. <laughs> okay, let's have a break. Okay, I will help those people to locate their credentials. Okay? <laughs> That's a break. <laughs>